County Planning Commission to order. Uh, I believe we have uh, all our members here except for one this evening, so we have a quorum. Our attorney uh, had called, and he's not going to be able to make it this evening. I think he went home early from work sick, possibly, so not going to make it. Uh, has everyone had a uh, time to read the minutes? Any additions, changes? If not, I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make it. First, we have second. I'll second. All in favor? Opposed, same sign. Minutes approved. Uh, Jim, I think we're probably ready. There he is. I thought you were sitting on the back. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Ready for you on uh, bringing us an update on the uh, zone enforcement on uh, Folks Road and. We have the Deaf Dylan Whitten property and 933 West Reed property to start with. Um, I, uh, I went out to visit the location on Fultz Road. Uh, that had to do with a complaint uh, where some people were allowing their son to stay in their barn as a second apartment on the property, which uh, is against uh, the the code rules and regulations for, for our county. Uh, I went and talked to the owner and he said they were going to stop that. So I sent them a letter to reiterate of what we talked about and we're just going to take his word for it that it's, they're moving him back in the house and out of the barn. Okay. And that's all we can do for now fine. unless I get another complaint. Who is it? Okay. What's, what? the, what's the name on the people, folks? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, uh, I, don't. I, I do. Um, a second. <laughs> I remember what I do. Yeah, it's right here. Um, it's Bunch. Richard Bunch. Bunch. Yeah. Richard Bunch. Yeah. And then uh, on the Witham product property, Hamlet, Hamlin. No, Whittem is the next Whittem. one. Whittem was, the Whittem property was one where he started, uh, it's off of Highway 62 on the other side of Canaan. Uh, he was adding on to his house in two different locations on the house. One looked like a porch, the other was attaching the house to the garage. So I stopped, left my card, he called me back and said that he was going to do all his work under the log cabin rule. And I, so you can, you can do the work under the log cabin rule, but you have to adhere to the rules for that. But you do have to come in and get a permit, otherwise we can't assess the property that's being improved. Uh, and he didn't appear that he understood that. So I sent him a letter that stated that so that we had a starting point to try to get him to get his permit. And that's where that stands. It's not 30 days hasn't gone by. I gave him 30 days on the letter to uh, take care of that. And he hasn't, he hasn't contacted me yet. So uh, we'll find out. Oh we got 30 days. We'll probably be more to come on that. Day. And that to meet that log cabin rules, almost impossible, isn't it? Yeah, today's now in the day and age is how it reads as far as all the material coming off the property and well it's a yep, the owner of the property is supposed to do all the work himself. Uh, that is a couple of things that are contrary to what the Indiana law is. For instance, any plumbing work now has to be done by a certified plumber, licensed right. and registered uh, with an active permit. So if the guy doing the work doesn't have that, right. you know, how can he even right. how can he even work on the plumbing part? So, uh, and I did talk to Pat about this. He sent me a uh, uh, case that was had judgment for the county, and I think it was Jennings County, mm -hmm. where somebody wanted to do this, but they wouldn't do the work themselves. So it but you know, so we're I mean, waiting on the 30 days on that property and we'll see what yes, happens. You're going to encourage days. them to at least get a permit process yep. and go from there. As soon as that's up, we'll uh, get all of them again and see what happens. And then the uh, 933 West, the Reed property? 
am I reading it correctly? 933, yep, 933. Uh, when I went by there, they, they're, I don't know if you've been by that one or not, they've got a couple acres, half of it's full of pallets. Uh, they've got junk, trash, uh, debris all over the place. And now they moved in a, I think it's probably 65 by 14 wide trailer. And it's about 15 feet off the edge of the road. So it's that it's in violation. There's no permit for it. Uh, I couldn't get up. I went. Uh, no one answered the door. So I sent him a letter telling him to call me. It was a certified letter. They got it. It came back signed. So I'm waiting for their 30 days to go up and call them too. And we'll move on to the, uh, under current business, we had the uh, violations on the Hamlin property. I see the Hamlins are here this evening. And uh, Jim, first update us on what you've seen as progress. Right. You took so, over the property. I went by there today. Uh, the property hasn't changed. Uh, that you could notice. Uh, a little damp out there. Um, but the trailers are in the same exact location that they were the last time I was yeah. there. Yeah, every, every time we got a swamp out there, every time we got ready to come and get them, it would rain on him or it would get too muddy. Mm -hmm. so. And he came and he took three <coughs> three cars out to the junk out back, and he came and there around the garage, you actually have to get up in the driveway to notice, I think, but. Um, he took a whole great big long trailer full of tires and all kinds of stuff off Terry did. It, it, it looks a lot better by the garage. Like I said, you have to get up there and look. Do you know but, where he took them? Uh, Do you know where he took he them? He took them to junk somewhere. He somewhere. got got rid of them somewhere. Mm -hmm. It was it was mm -hmm. no property. It was a junk place somewhere that took the tires and stuff so I have no idea he didn't tell me all I know is he okay. he took them off and he's supposedly supposed to be coming to get those two campers as soon as he can get in there to get them okay. uh, three trailers well one of them is uh, one of them is uh, it doesn't belong to him it belongs to uh, What's Ben's last name? I don't know what Ben's last name is. Uh, ben, uh, his girlfriend, Bridget Couch, but she's been up to his house. She ain't been there. I talked to them about moving that out, and there again, it's wet. I don't know. Um, he said he had talked to somebody down here, and they said it didn't have to be moved out. I don't know. They're supposed to be here, and they're not here, because I told him, I said, here's what we were told. Come down to that meeting so they can, you can talk to them, they can talk to you, tell you what it has to be done, because, I'm, you know, we don't, we just want everything out there and get it all cleaned up like it's supposed to be. You don't want to try and go by your all's rules. And <laughs> so. And everybody, you know, they, they think we're making it up. Okay, well, what about like the trash and debris? The, and the trailer went off. Well, no, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's been there, like that old pool. That yeah, uh, so I've got I've got to pick it up because we need some. We've got a new pool, we, a different pool that we're going to put up this spring that we went to Northern Kentucky and got. But we need the pull the metal things from that and then we're going to get rid of the old pool and get it out there but uh, we got I, I really need to get out there and get those things off there and get that out of there right uh, and but but those are the things that you were supposed to be doing before yeah. you came to this meeting tonight you're, there's, yeah. there's a lot you can do that's not getting done and I and that's what the board's wondering yeah. you know how that's going to take place well maybe if I where I work at, I don't have to go tomorrow. I'm gonna get out there tomorrow and get some of that stuff moved, picked up. <laughs> like the pool, we could we could roll that we up roll because it, up it, it can be rolled up and put put like where it can't be seen and it's nice and neat. Well, I was out by the property last Thursday or Friday. I can't remember which one. And uh, yeah, I would have to say, at first glance, it looks similar to 
what the problem had been. But if you look a little closer, I could tell that there had been things done to the property to where it wasn't quite as cluttered as what it was. And I didn't see signs to where they were immediately still living in those trailers full time. If that came to a halt, that's yeah, so not the sheet been staying the the one back here they are. The sheet been staying up at his house a lot. She don't even stay in that trailer. So that that did seem to be a little bit of improvement. But yeah. uh, as uh, the enforcement officer was talking, I did see a lot of small things that here. if they could be gathered up, it would make a lot of appearance difference even though it's so wet and you can't get to the major items or more of the cars hauled off and that type of thing. So if, if those were areas that you can pay attention as we talked last time. Yeah. You know, there's a bag of trash or two sitting here and there. And, but there had been areas I saw over by the garage where that had been cleaned up and so forth. So yeah. there has been uh, some progress made and on the property. she cleaned up the front porch off. There was a bunch of trash and different stuff up there we got she got that done yesterday and cleaned up a bunch of the front there mm -hmm. and there uh, I'm waiting for them to come and get that car out of the front yard there again that's Terry Hall so mm -hmm. uh, I we're waiting for him to come and get that out of there so what are the what are the boards thought on it how do you want to proceed weather like it is are we going to have to maybe let them have a few more days I think so. I think we need to. Yes. They're making some progress, and the, and the opportunity they came down this evening and willing to continue conversation with us goes a long ways on itself. Everybody's way too wet. All right, it's been too wet on getting the big thing down. So <coughs> uh, you came in. You what you mentioned someone was coming about the other. That one camper that's there that you was talking about, the two is Terry Hall's and the other mm -hmm. one is there. She had been staying there, but she doesn't stay there a lot. She's been staying up to his house and stuff and, you know. She comes down and helps clean up. Yeah, they've been helping us an awful lot. I mean. Well, there's, there's no doubt that people can have a camper stored on their property. Uh -huh. but, when you start getting in three, four, and all the junk that's around yeah. them is where it becomes a problem. That's what but I they, to they really aren't normally set up to be lived in full time when they were on the property yeah. because of the health and the sewage problems and so forth. It's, it's not a, because we'll have times where someone's moved it in and turned it into a residence and that's a violation as such. Right, right. right. And, uh, you know, we would have to see what the overall appearance and how things came about if you get the rest of the property cleaned up as far as the one camper being able to stay there because okay. there's a lot of properties around that have a camper on the property as such so we we can be tolerant of that how long is that how long has that one been sitting there one year is that it's not uh, been sitting there very long at all has it very long how long and probably toward the end of summer i'd say three months maybe no maybe a little bit longer than maybe. That. how many months three months. probably a little bit three months and see and that's the one right behind the house near the garage Right. No, no, no. Right. that's the one right there it, by that driveway that goes back to that one back it's, okay. it's the really nice one back there. That oh, as well, uh, the one sits next to it with the tarp that's over top of it, and this would be yeah. to the left. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Correct. That's the one that doesn't have the tarp, but it's next to the next. one that's got the yeah. tarp. Yeah. Is the fifth wheel. Right, I know which one you mean there. So. Yes, my grandkids. They get a little bit crazy every now and then, and you have to get away from them, you know. Because <laughs> my face has got to be cleaned up, too. I mean, nobody said nothing, but I'm trying to get them tied to be done. I got, I got to get rid of them, too. I'm going to haul stuff off. Well, I'd entertain a motion that we leave this table this for another 30 days to our next meeting and, and take a look at it then. Absolutely. We have motion and a second. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. We'll work with you for another 30 days. And I appreciate that. And the I'm trying to go by your, trying to do it everything the way you all want. <laughs> well, there's, there's a lot of area there you've got that if you could just gather up some of the small things yeah. and get the trash out of there, even some things, if you can't quite get them hauled out, if you could get it combined in one spot so when it comes time to load it up and it dries up, that you're able to do so mm -hmm. a little more easy to where it looks like there's some progress. Because there has been some. Like I said, first time you just drive by, it doesn't appear so, but yeah. when you stop and look a little bit, I could tell there had been some effort put into it. 
We had all the stuff out from the front. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate it then. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Our next meeting will be March 3rd, same time, right. 5.30. I'll be here. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <out. laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, the next item on our uh, agenda is an update on the uh, two-mile buffer zone. Uh, you want to update us on that, David, or I can, either one. Okay. So we put a 180-day pause on it. So. Uh, probably from the day we did it, so that would be the June sometime. Uh, we're going to meet tomorrow with members from the City Plan Commission and our Plan Commission and then a couple commissioners to try to start getting the uh, the things that need to be in, a, in, in an agreement to handle this area better than we have. So. Any comments, any thoughts on the buffer zone, anything you want? Is the city a board or all a board on this? The city is a board on its meeting and discussing how to resolve issues that are in the buffer zone. The city is not in favor from what I can understand in the letter they sent the county. They are not wanting to surrender zoning control of the buffer back to the county as such. Did they give you a reason? Uh, they feel that because of, I, not necessarily me, you, you may have saw the letter more, they feel they've invested a lot of dollars in road improvements and so forth, and that they've had control over the buffer area since 1963 or so, and they're not wanting to surrender that control. Can you enlighten any more on that, David? Or? I'll, get, I'll get the letter out right here. 1963? I think so. I think that's what so he said. So the city maintains the roads within, out in that They city. don't maintain them, but they've made road improvements in that area. They said, and I I'll, I'll let the letter cover it here in a second. I thought the county did all that. At least I only see county work on it. Well, you have Hutchinson Lane, for example, the widening of that project. That's uh, Tiff Murray. Tiff that, yeah, that, yeah, that's that, not I don't city know. Well, that's what they consider. I think it's a good point there. <laughs> So out in the, in the two mile jurisdiction I live up mm -hmm. on the Ridge. No, there wouldn't be anything uh, there. Yeah, and also uh, Smith, the county's been yeah. taking care of that. Did you find their letter? Yep. Yeah. <coughs> yep, that'd read that'd probably be the easiest. <coughs> All right. So uh, dear Commissioner Little, the city of Madison is in receipt of your recent letter informing us that Jefferson County Board of Commissioners has unilaterally rescinded the ordinance which has had established the two-mile buffer zone. As a follow-up to our meeting yesterday to discuss the matter, I'm informing you that we oppose this action. The City of Madison and Jefferson County has shared land use oversight responsibility since the two-mile buffer zone which was originally established in 1963. The two entities shared in the oversight of this zone through joint participation of our Planning Commission and Board of Zoning Appeals. In addition, the City of Madison has made substantial investment in the buffer zone to promote economic development, improve roads, sustain property values, and deliver water and sewer utility service to the residents in the buffer zone. Uh, it's unfortunate that this action was taken without discussing your concerns with either with us or the either the City of Madison Plan Commission or the Jefferson Plan Com Planning Commission first. I believe the issues that have been expressed can be resolved amicably and proper with proper communication and collaboration. Uh, respect, respect, respectfully request that you immediately forbear enforcement of the ordinance for a period of 180 days so that we may work toward an amicable solution, which in my opinion is part education and reconciling some elements of our respective zoning requirements. The City of Madison and Jefferson County has common goals for our community that demand mutual respect and communication for us to be successful. We are committed to working together with Jefferson <coughs> County to further our mutual goals and hope you are too. I look forward to hearing from you as soon as possible. Sincerely, Bob G. Courtney, Mayor, City of Miles. Thoughts, comments? So did you send a letter back to that? Yes, we sent a letter saying... What did that one say? We paused it for 180 days. <laughs> and I don't know if I have a copy of it. What I'm going to propose at tomorrow evening meeting, I, the first that would be the first meeting that we have. I, I somewhat see that more as an organizational meeting and uh, I think we need to first, before we get into actually discussing solutions or so forth, we need for uh, to identify what the 
problems are uh, in the zone, set up a, a calendar as to how we think the group should proceed as to what with what meetings when and so forth. And uh, you know, at some point, once the problems, and you could have a public meeting to invite a hearing and so forth in for the public to go in and address their concerns and their problems they find in the zone. After all of that could be documented, then I think we would move to the stage of discussing possible solutions and uh, putting forth something to both the uh, city and the county that might be acceptable to both parties. And uh, would like if. If they're willing to, I'd like to have some kind of understanding within our group that we strive to a solution that is going to be approved by maybe two-thirds of the group or something like that instead of just a simple majority where we have something that there's pretty broad support on whatever solutions that we would uh, bring as a recommendation back. But I don't know that. I don't control that agenda or so forth. They may have different ideas on how to proceed. And, that in now, but I think we are meeting in the commissioner's office. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thanks, Toby. We would like to hear from the residents and, and what different type of problems that have, to have occurred over the years. The most the common thing that I that I hear is for the people that live in the two-mile fringe, there's a feeling of well, we have to abide by their rules, but we don't get any say in the elections as such. And then probably the most common, though, is the fact of lack of enforcement. That there's a county says it's city's problem, the city says it's county to a certain extent on the property maintenance and repair issues. That's been going on a long, long time, too. Mm -hmm. Well, the action that the commissioner showed at least has brought it to the table, which is a positive, positive thing. I have a question. Mm -hmm. You're saying that they're talking about letting them have 20%. How long is that going on? Forever or a definite period of time. Uh, yeah, but you were going to talking about. Uh, oh, that's totally separate on the on the. I don't know where they're at on the jail. Okay. They jail talk. Okay. They will have nothing that's, to do okay. with. That's what I was No, that's that's to totally separate. We're not in on those discussions. Okay. I don't want in on those discussions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. We'll let the commissioners handle that one. Any other thoughts on that or? And anyone's welcome to attend. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a meeting that's open to the public as such tomorrow evening. They'll all be open to the public, and uh, uh, I think we'll do. We'll need to turn to some people who live in the zone to be able to get people at a public meeting, so we can get some participation. Yeah. Play at City Hall. This tomorrow's at Commissioner's office. Okay. It was announced on the radio today. Yes. Yeah. I think that's critical to get the public input on yes. mm -hmm. how it impacts the residents and business holders in some cases. But I do look like well, said, mostly organizational tomorrow, you know, that I have to decide if they want to have a chairman, and if so, who, and go from those lines. Have had a lot of discussion along those lines. And, and to look at who the, is there tomorrow evening, and is this broad enough for the committee, or do we need to expand it, and so forth, and get an idea, and we can go from there. Let's see, I haven't talked to Mayor Courtney in great in detail, I have on it have to Mr. Little, so uh, Commissioner Little. Anything else on the zone? And we'll move on to uh, new business that uh, Jim can bring us up to date. We have uh, two violations, one on the Ramona Leach property at 533 West. <clears throat> yep, 550... 5333 South 550 West. Yes. And uh, I've been on the phone and talked to them, and uh, the lady that the lady that actually owns the property is not in good health, but she has someone that works for her, and they called me several times, telling me that they're cleaning it up. Uh, the trailer that was moved onto the property is going to be relocated somewhere else. They just needed time to be able to get in there to get it out. Okay. Uh, I told them that the board could uh, let me know and I could get back with them on how long they would, they would give him, like a week or two weeks or 30 days to take it out. They, they don't want it there. He's cleaning up the property. The property had debris and trash and he's cleaning that up. That's going to be done by the end of the weekend. 
and then it'll be a matter of getting the trailer out of there. But now this is one that has a large stone house and yes. built in behind. Yes. And if this is just yes. so everyone's on the same page, this was a trailer that we thought we'd been so successful. It changed ownership. <laughs> we had it down on New Bethel Road, and it showed up back over here. And I, I think they actually sold it to the people. So it was a, you know, kind of a hands-off transaction. But, yeah. but we still got the trailer to deal with. Yeah. But it is positive they've moved towards moving it off versus this of turning into a storage building. I told him when he moved it, I wanted to know where it was going before he moved it. I think they got the electricity hooked up to the trailer. Now, I see a light on there. Well, it's just not. It might be an extension cord. cord. Well, yeah, it's just sitting about like right. It's kind of lopsided. Yeah, it's lopsided. Yeah. <coughs> well, the tires are still very bad for <laughs> I think about all we can do on it is for you to keep an eye time wise when, and yep. let them know that the ground gets solid enough because it sits back off the road in the field enough mm -hmm. that until it dries up a little bit, there's not any way they can yeah. get it out of there without tearing things all up. It actually appears to be a construction trailer. I haven't, I haven't been inside of it. Uh, it's a full-size mobile home, though. It's it's yeah. it's it's a it's, it's maybe full-size, but it's like a 50-footer instead of a mm -hmm. normal 70. I'm mm -hmm. probably 12 right. foot wide instead okay. of 14. But okay. but yes, I'll keep an eye on it All and right. uh, I'll I'll hold him to what he promised me he would do. Okay. And I don't, how long do you want to give him? I, I think you're just going to have to play it by ear and see what okay. the, what the weather's like and so okay. forth. We'll you know, there's not much point in putting a certain number of days just extended out <coughs> down the road. So. Well, it seems to work better if I can give them a goal. So if I put a date out there and say we want it by this date, and, and when they when they don't, it's usually shortly thereafter. Well, you're you're in a good position to put a date in. Yes, you I can take care that, of that problem yeah, for us. I, I think we're okay. And then report back to us if they don't yeah. meet the date that you chose for. Yeah. I mean, what was the other one? The other one is the Terry Hall property on 7569 West Jones Road. That's okay. a new one for me. Terry Hall is the gentleman that they were just talking about who had trailers on their property. And he's been moving. Well, I was wondering. He's been moving, <laughs> he's been moving debris and tires and cars from the Pope Road location to the Jones Road location. <laughs> I sent him a letter. Uh, certified, he signed it, it came back, uh, and uh, so they know, they know that they, they have to clean up. They've also brought in a storage shed, and it's too close to the road, they didn't get a permit for that. So uh, that was one of the things that I noted in the letter that they had to uh, take care of. But until he comes in, or we can get all of so I gave him 30 days to correct everything. When that 30 days is up, we'll take another look about, see what we can do about maybe giving them another letter or having them actually come in and you know, okay. tell us what they're going to do. Anyone have anything else? Just out of curiosity, these complaints are coming from adjoining landowners? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen the complaints on all of these. There, there, there may be a situation where it's adjoining landowners. There may be some that Jim has seen when he's been out on something else. It could be a combination of both. Uh, I know, for example, the uh, uh, trailer that's down on, uh, that we just talked about on the Leach property, I drove by and saw it sitting there. I think they may have heard from other sources on it as well, but it was the one we just moved off of Bethel over here, so it kind of jumped jumped out at me. No, that's what's happened to the one on uh, 933. Mm -hmm. That came from Ennis Road. Okay. It, it just looked like they just hooked onto it and pulled it off and well, where did it go? You know, they go back up the county and see. Yeah, yeah. this is go this way. <laughs> Then I should have said something at the beginning of the meeting. We kind of covered introductions before the meeting started one way or the other, but uh, David Ferguson is here. He's a new member on our uh, planning commission, appointed by the commissioners. We'll also be serving on the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, the commissioners have an appointment. It has to be the same person to both boards that they have there. So we welcome David on board. And uh, the Republicans had a caucus, and we now have a new surveyor who is also part of our board, Mike Pittman. We're very glad to have everybody here and uh, look forward to working with everyone. 
We do have a committee meeting afterwards on the solar. Um, Pat's not here this evening, so we don't have anything on the executive. There wasn't anything to report that I know of on the legal side there. So, anyone else have anything else for this evening? If not, entertain a motion to adjourn the board meeting, and then we'll have the committee meeting. I'm going to adjourn. I have a second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Board adjourned.